last week, and that's just where I was. At home? Now he's hospital, rehab, back to the hospital, back to the rehab. That's so tough. But what's the joke? Like, I don't have time for that. Let us know if we can help you move them. I appreciate it. Thanks, but it's like... All right, I'm going to consider that we've waited long enough. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 21st meeting of the Rochester Planning Commission. And I would like to ask the clerk to call the roll. I see Mr. Sage. Chairman McGee? Here. Vice Chair Floor? Here. Mayor Bixon? Here. Council Member Sage? Here. Clark Martin? Here. I'm attending virtually for medical reasons. Mr. Gaston is excused. Alder? Here. King? Here. And Commissioner Stone is excused. You have a four. Thank you very much. We have seven. Very good. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank Mr. Lord for pinch hitting for me uh, a couple weeks ago. I missed I missed the meeting. Um, you probably know, but I had COVID, and my wife had COVID. We both got it within two days of each other, and uh, wow, it was a wild ride. It was like having the flu, so um, just uh, keep your heads down. It wasn't a lot of fun, mm. but it passed. It passed. Goodness. Uh, number three, public comment. Sienna, any public comment for us? Not at this time. Okay, any members of the audience have anything to volunteer for us right now okay thank you the next uh, item <clears throat> number four is election of officers and we've been a, a bit remiss about this <clears throat> the planning statute says that this should happen once a year and I think we've skipped over it a couple times but in any event we have it on the agenda for tonight um, I just want to point out Jeff can correct me if I make any mistakes here but um, there are two statutory officers that have to be elected according to the uh, Michigan <coughs> planning law. And that's the chairman and the secretary. The chairman obviously runs the meeting. Secretary sounds ceremonial except for right now, uh, particularly when we're doing the master plan revisit, et cetera, when we issue a new one. It's the secretary of the planning commission who has to make the communication to all of the bodies. Well, that's everywhere from the county board to SEMCOG and on and on and on, fairly ceremonial, and the staff is really good in terms of preparing those transmittal letters. So when we come to that time, uh, the elected secretary has that duty to sign and, and pass it on. And then we're allowed to um, have other officers if we wish, and in our case, we have a vice chairman as well. So um, pretty simple, um, although I, I was gonna make a comment to the mayor that I think you and the council should be Please, you have a really terrific group here that you've selected and put into office. I mean, these these folks cover the waterfront, and uh, any one of them could handle any of these jobs at any time, obviously. And you know, for the commissioners, I tell you, it's it's a pleasure working with you. Um, the professionalism's really intense. Um, I hope you stick around. I mean, we come and we go in life, and. Uh, if this isn't your time to be the leader, I hope you stick around long enough to entertain that thought in the future. It's good for the city. It's good for everybody. You're, you're learning, you're developing, you're contributing, and when the time comes, um, don't hesitate to step forward. So I think we'll start with the two statutory officers first. So that's the chairman and the secretary, and I'm just going to throw it open. I don't know. Do we have a secretary? It was, was Gus, Dean? Yes. Dean was the secretary, okay. Is that, is that right, Fiona? Yes, he was the secretary, but since he's gone, you guys can appoint someone okay. else. Okay, good enough. Okay, Mr. Mayor. So I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we, for chairman, uh, we nominate Chairman McGee 
And if uh, Council Member Sage is willing to nominate Council Member Sage to take Council Member, former Council Member Bavacqua's space place as the secretary. I will accept. Okay. And I accept. Is there support? Support. Support. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? So could we have the roll call, please? Chairman McGee? Yes. Vice Chairman Lord? Yes. Mayor Bixon? Yes. Council Member Sage? Yes. Commissioners Clark Martin? Yes. Hauser? Yes. <coughs> King? Yes. Thank you very much. We're, we're both honored. And now for the uh, vice chair. Mr. Mayor? If Mr. Lord wants to continue serving, would you like to continue serving? I would be happy to. The only issue is um, my ability to be here on a, on a very regular basis. I know I've missed a few meetings, um, work and life and everything in between. So uh, I'm happy to do it, but just, you know. Uh, well, if, if, I mean. It's rare that that's only once this year, I think, that. Mm -hmm. right. We had to do it. We've got a conflict, yeah. 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 So uh, more than happy, but if anybody else feels that they could be more regular and um, uh, be a better vice chair, I'd <laughs> I would knock. I would knock anyone down. <laughs> I would nominate Mr. Hauser. Did nope, you want? No. To, no. I'm probably less regular. I've got two little ones. I have the time. I have the capacity. And so if there's an opportunity, I'm not trying to steal your thunder, and I'm not certainly not trying to <clears throat> pull the rug underneath your feet, but if the opportunity presents itself, I would accept. Okay. So I will nominate uh, Mr. Hauser. I, again, with, I would have been happy to to Maybe next year. you, but, um, yeah. yeah. Nope. Maybe, Maybe next, next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have support for that motion? Support. Supported by King. Any other discussion? The roll call, please. Chairman McGee? Yes. Vice Chairman Lord? Yes. Mayor Bixen? Yes. Council Member Sage? Yes. Commissioner Clark Martin? Yes. Hauser? Yes. And King? Yes. Thank you very much. Good luck to all of you for the coming year. Next item is uh, approval of the minutes, and the first is consideration of the minutes of the regular meeting of September 23rd, 2021. So moved. Moved by the mayor. Do we have support? Support. Support of Mr. Lord. Any discussion on these minutes? The roll call, please. Chairman McGee? Yes. Vice Chairman Lord? Yes. Mayor Bixen? Yes. Council Member Sage? Yes. Commissioners Clark Martin? Yes. Hauser? Yes. King? Yes. Thank you. Next item is uh, 5B consideration of the minutes of the regular meeting of October 4th, 2021. So moved. Moved by the mayor. Is there support? Support. Ordered by King. Any other discussion on these minutes? The roll call, please. Chairman McGee? Yes. Vice Chairman Lord. Yes. Mayor Bixen. Yes. Council Member Sage. Yes. Commissioners Clark Martin. Yes. Hauser. Yes. King. Yes. Thank you very much. We now have two public hearings. The first one, 6A, public hearing for the consideration of an ordinance amendment to section 2306 regarding light and illumination. Mr. Attorney. Yes, thank you. Um, today, is, as you just referenced, is the uh, date set for the public hearing for this lighting ordinance, since it is a zoning ordinance. Uh, this is in the same form as you saw um, at the last time it was considered, uh, with the exception of two changes uh, that were requested by Planning Commission. Uh, one was to uh, reduce the sunset provision from one year uh, down to six months, and so that change has been uh, incorporated. And, and that's in uh, subsection 3B3. And the other change requested was to make it um, uh, clear, and that hopefully I did that, uh, to make it clear that 
the single family residential lighting from uh, abutting other single family uh, residences uh, were while subject to the one foot candle um, uh, restriction uh, is otherwise exempt from the other um, regulations in the exterior lighting in all districts category. So those are the two uh, changes that were made. Uh, if planning commission is ready to dis uh, to discuss the, uh, it would be to set it for or to open the public hearing, discuss it, close the public hearing, and then uh, if appropriate to move it to city council for consideration. Any uh, questions for the attorney before I open the public hearing? Can I just clarify one item? The strike in letter H on page three. This is this is only pertaining to commercial, correct? So based on the um, the CB, it's in CBD B one O one O two districts. That that's correct. So okay. that that subsection one H uh, that is the that change it only deals in those uh, four districts, correct? Thanks. <clears throat> Okay, it's 7 and we'll consider the public hearing open. Sorry, Chris. Oh, also, just, one, just one quick question. On page number five in the uh, red line version, section 3C, it says standard lights. Is standard a defined term somewhere? No. And the, the reason I put standard sure. in there um, was because uh, I, w rather than saying I, I said I was going to put lights from, but I could, I could foresee a, a situation where uh, a neighbor wanted to not be a nice neighbor and have a spotlight, which would technically be residential to residential. And I think uh, it's, you know, it when you see it type situation. So if it's a, a normal carriage light, I didn't want to even define it as carriage light because there could be um, motion sensor lights, which aren't, it was, so those are all fine. Right. But it's, you know, what you would normally typically see in a residential. So that is not a defined term. Thank you. That's all. I, thank you very sure. much. Trevor. So the public hearing is open at 712. And uh, I ask first, Sienna, do you have any um, electronic or written communications regarding this item? I have not received any electronic um, notice or considered comments, but I do not have anyone else on the line either. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, this is open for consideration by the public, and I'd ask if anyone present here has any comments they'd like to make personally about the ordinance. Of this comment, this has been under discussion for a long period of time, and the chief is here, and he and Nick have done a, a fine job in husbanding this issue uh, and trying to keep it out of the, the realm of controversy. And, uh, you know, I think what we've all learned is that lighting is very subjective. <laughs> Some people like bare bulbs and talked about preserving old Rochester, and other people hate it, and, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. I, I hope we have found a, uh, a compromise here and uh, we can move forward with it. Any other comments? Okay, we'll consider the public hearing held. It's now 714. Back to the commissioners. Comments, actions. I'd like to make a motion to approve the ordinance as drafted by attorney. Yeah. And afford it city council. Yes. Okay. Support for that motion? Support. It's been moved by Ms. King and supported by Kristen Hauser. Do we have any other discussion? <laughs> so the roll call, please. Chairman McGee? Yes. Vice Chairman Lord? Yes. Mayor Bixen? Yes. Council Member Sage? Yes. Commissioners Clark Martin? Yes. Hauser? Yes. King. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. The next item is the second public hearing, and this is uh, 6B, <coughs> public hearing for the consideration of an ordinance amendment to section 2125 <coughs> regarding fence standards. Mr. Attorney. Yes, thank you. Uh, again, before you is uh, proposed ordinance section 2125 for fence uh, standards. This uh, pertains to the enclosure of uh, properties with have swimming pools, uh, outdoor swimming pools. Um, the the just to refresh uh, for those who may not recall the the current code, these current international swimming pool and spa code uh, allowed for a, a uh, an exception to the fencing or barrier requirements um, if a pool had a powered safety cover. 
Um, both city council considered an ordinance amendment uh, um, in the regular code uh, that would take away that exception. We want to have um, fencing, even if they have powered safety covers. And so this was, uh, I guess, a, a tandem uh, ordinance amendment because the fence ordinance is in the zoning code. And so it has to generate at this, uh, at this body first. Um, there was a, so this, the purpose of this ordinance is to, is to require fencing around um, outdoor swimming pools uh, as required by the code, regardless of a powered safety cover. Um, as uh, indicated in the memo, I, I believe it was uh, uh, one of the commissioners uh, had requested or asked a comment, uh, does this apply to hot tubs? Um, I believe it was Commissioner King that, that did that. We did take a look. Uh, I discussed it with uh, the fire chief and the building official. Um, we looked at the code and there is a similar, it, it does, um, that there is a similar exception for hot tubs uh, if they have a lockable safety cover. So we, we went around back and forth, do we want to have a similar, I guess, uh, vetoing of that exception? Um, and after discussion, we, we decided that uh, for presentation, we wouldn't, um, we would let that exception stand. I think it's more um, popular to have a hot tub with a lockable safety cover if they're going to have that. That's a much easier, um, I guess, uh, solution. I think less attractive nuisance to, um, uh, to people who may be wandering in. I think there's, um, we could certainly, if Planning Commission wanted to propose that, we could uh, take away the uh, exception for lockable safety covers, but at this time, uh, we did not believe that that would be a, kind of the similar, in similar nature as a, as a pool situation. So uh, we could certainly go either way on it, um, but th what's before you does not have the exception for the uh, swimming pool, uh, excuse me, for the hot tub. Any questions for the attorney? <clears throat> so I will open the public hearing at 717 and ask Sianna if you have any written or electronic communication regarding the subject. I do not. Okay, thank you very much. Again, anyone from the audience who would like to comment on this, this is the time to do it. Hearing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing at 718. Back to the commissioners here. <clears throat> I know that uh, one applicant has sort of beat the system here. Um, I regret that that happened. I know that the administration has asked them to reconsider and they have not, but in any event, I think this is a responsible thing to do. And uh, I, I suggest we move forward with it. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we um, push this ordinance forward and um, regarding the fence standards. Okay, is there support? Support. Or of Mr. Sage? Support. <laughs> <coughs> Any other discussion? The roll call, please. Chairman McGee? Yes. Vice Chairman Lord? Yes. Mayor Bixen? Yes. Council Member Sage? Yes. Commissioners Clark Martin? Yes. Hauser? Yes. King? Yes. Thank you very much. Next item is uh, number seven, considerations. Consideration of proposed changes to the master plan draft and recommendation. Um, Dennis? Yes. Dennis, I'm sorry. Um, we're actually going to have Christy. Oh, I forgot. Um, sorry, Sianna. Session. I'm sorry. Breaking yeah. the action here, folks. We're going to skip ahead. We're going to skip ahead to 10... C, report from the Downtown Development Authority on their recent visioning session. Christy Tavaro. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for getting us in tonight. Uh, it's a brief presentation, just a highlight of the visioning session that we held last month, and I know several people here were in attendance at that. Sienna has my deck up, so we'll just kind of <coughs> dig right in. Actually, I think, Dennis, I see you at the second table in my cover slide right oh, there. Oh, here, here I am, <laughs> yes. Um, Sienna, go ahead and advance one slide for me. So um, the session that we held is similar to one that we did about five years ago, and we asked for the same breakdown of people to attend that, which was Rochester area residents, elected officials, business and property owners, developers, 
boards and commissions, volunteer groups, uh, community stakeholders, and nonprofits. We wanted to have a wide cross section of the community, and it wanted to represent beyond the city of Rochester, but Rochester Hills and Oakland Township as well. We feel that's important because our general trade area for downtown is not supported just by the residents, but by the greater area. So we wanted to get their input as well. Next slide, Sienna. Um, one thing that we thought was interesting, we pulled out the previous attendee list, and I think it's notable that 58% of the attendees did not attend the previous visioning session. That's important because when you see some of the data, if you're familiar with what happened last time and the information that we received from that, the data was very similar five years compared to now, but almost 60% of the people hadn't attended that one, so I thought that was notable. All right, let's get to some results for you. Um, we asked several questions of the groups, and these are the highlights. Uh, the first question that we asked the tables was, what businesses would you like to see downtown? The purpose of this question is because, as Nick and I have discussed with many people, we know economically, uh, we still have about 18 months to go before we're fully out of COVID. Our businesses are still you know, in flux. Some people can't find staff. There's a lot of different things going on downtown. And so we believe that after this year, there may be some opportunities, some new spaces available. So we wanted to see what's on everyone's minds. If we did have opportunities to backfill spaces downtown, what would those spaces look like? Uh, these are the top four answers out of all of the responses that were received. Uh, number one is a market of some type. Uh, people expressed an interest in a year-round farmer's market, which is something the DDA had worked on a few years ago, or some type of boutique grocery store, something like a smaller version of a Nino's or a Papa Joe's or a Westbourne or something of that nature. The town square still came through. Um, again, people want an outdoor gathering space and or a, get an entertainment venue. Um, some people talked about an amphitheater outside, um, beyond the one that's in the park, because they wanted something specifically downtown. And we'll get a little bit more into downtown and the town square concept in a couple slides. Um, theater came up, whether it was a movie theater or a combined movie live performance theater. I know that the um, Historical Society had been working on something to try and get a movie theater at the Main Street Plaza, which is the former Hills Theater several years ago, and weren't able to make that move forward. Um, but there is still definitely an appetite for some type of project, whether it's a live performance theater, a movie theater, or a hybrid of those two. Um, and live music kept coming up. A lot of people mentioned 20 Front Street in Lake Orion. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. It's a small venue. They can only seat about 100, 120 people. It's very cool. If you get a chance, definitely check it out. Um, but they're looking for a permanent out indoor venue. Um, the, what we got out of this question is very similar to what we heard five years ago. People love downtown, but they want more reasons to come here. And they want more reasons and opportunities to go and be with their friends and neighbors. And they want more things to do. A lot of people say, other than restaurants, there's nothing here to do at night unless we're doing events or it's big bright light show season. So that was some interesting data that we got out of this question. Next one, Sienna. So one of the things that is um, very popular these days and coming on, I know you guys are working on master plan tonight, um, art master plans for cities and for downtowns are something that people are starting to work on because art is a great part of community and they feel strongly that if there's a plan, then plans could be put in place to look for grants and opportunities if what locations were already cited. So we asked generally, if we could add art somewhere downtown, where would you like it to be? Um, people love to do something on the bridges. I know that some graffiti artists have already attempted to make some art on our bridges, but that's not quite what we're looking for. Something slightly more <clears throat> formal, but they like the idea of it actually being on top of the bridges and then also underneath the bridges, which is similar in a lot of urban cities that you might see. Um, gateways came through very strong. So any of the entrance ways into town, they feel like those could be elevated to do something with art, whether it's sculpture or something else interesting. Uh, people love the parking decks. There are a lot of great walls in the parking decks, especially the light well in the east parking platform. It's this beautiful blank wall. It's just screaming for a mural. Um, but parking decks came through loud and clear. I think a lot of that also came from the Magical Mural Tour, which is our pop-up mural project we do in September. Um, we put a lot of those on the decks, and people really have responded to those. And then adding art to our pocket parks, uh, the Rochester Lions Park, which is behind the Western Knitting Mill, Depot Plaza, which is the one by catching fireflies there's a giant Christmas tree and the walnut pocket parks that the DDA built a few years ago the one at the corner of fourth and walnut and the other at University and walnut so um, that's something DDA is very excited about the um, DIA mural that went in this year on the DTA substation wall that was actually slated for last year but then Everything happened last year, so unfortunately, weren't able to execute it. That one has gotten a lot of positive attention, and we hope that that might be some momentum going forward to add more art into our community. Next one, Sienna. 
Uh, where would you like to see placemaking projects downtown? I know with Planning Commission, you guys are very familiar with placemaking here. Um, but we just asked people in general where you would like to see some interesting projects downtown. Um, people hit the alleys really hard. They really would like to see some things there, whether it's adding some art, some consistent lighting. I know that a lot of people wouldn't think, oh, alleys, I want to go hang out there. And I don't know that I would suggest it. But maybe there's something that we can do to make it a little bit more inviting, add some interesting amenities. I know that uh, during Main Street Makeover, we had painted those temporary red paths to show that that's a loading zone, a pedestrian zone. Maybe we can go back to some of those things. I know in the long-term plan that the DDA would love to add the stamp concrete crosswalk like we have in the West 400 block. That was able to be done because of the parking structure construction over there. I don't know if that's likely because they aren't inexpensive, but they sure do look nice. But there might be some opportunity with that as well. Um, the amphitheater came through again. People would like to see an outdoor venue built in downtown where they could do something. A lot of people mentioned when they were saying the amphitheater that it could be a covering for the farmer's market. Going back to that year-round concept, we felt like we were going in a lot of circles. <laughs> Everything kept connecting together. Uh, the outdoor gathering spaces. Um, people like the outdoor seating areas. We just added all those picnic tables this year, the octagon on ones that we've had around town. Um, we added the parklet last year. We added more outdoor dining, but people are still asking for more seating outdoors downtown. And then last but not least, reimagining the Lions Park, which we mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, that was actually funded by the Rochester Lions Club donation about 15, 16 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, they actually coincidentally, prior to this visioning session, had reached out to me to say that they might be interested in reimagining that park and doing something more with it. And so now that we've heard that through the survey, we're, I'm hoping that the DDA will take up that charge and see if there's something else that we might be able to do to elevate that park as well. Go ahead, Sienna. And then finally, redevelopment <coughs> ideas for downtown. So we put out maps of the entire city, not just downtown, in front of the community and ask them what they would like to see and the and where they would like to see it. And while the locations varied, the two top things that people want is the outdoor music venue and the year-round farmer's market. So what does that mean for all of us? Well, we don't know yet. As you all know, we were working on the front porch project, which was something that really would encompass many of these things, the year-round market, having amphitheater and stage, there's going to be outdoor seating, a lot of things. Um, so DDA is going to have a lot of thinking to do and a lot of work to do over goals and objective season to have some things to bring back to everyone. So for the next slide, Sienna. So what's next? Um, we're doing presentations. Obviously, we're here tonight at Planning Commission. We'll be at City Council on Monday. These are strictly informational. No decisions have been made by DDA, budgets, nothing like that. We just wanted to make sure that since everyone don't gave their time to us so generously a month ago, we wanted to let you know that we're working on it and we've been able to compile all the information that we received. Um, after these presentations, all of this information is going to be referred to the DDA Site Development Committee. Um, and they're going to start working on possibilities, developing plans and ideas that would then be presented to DDA at their goals and objectives in January of next year. And then whatever comes out of that, whatever the DDA comes to consensus on with them, come in a more formal package to be discussed with the City Council at the Goals and Objectives meeting that they have jointly with the DDA, PSD, and Council in March. So we have a lot of work ahead of us, but we really didn't want to miss the opportunity because even though we did this session five years ago, we wanted to do a check-in with everyone to see where they were, if they were still thinking what they were thinking five years ago. And of course, the last 18 months, a lot of people, things have changed. And we wanted to check in and see where they, what they were looking for. So uh, DDA, the last couple years, has had to be a little bit more reactive than proactive with everything going on with COVID. And we're optimistic that now we can start moving a little bit more forward and making some long-term plans to benefit our community. And that's what we hope to do. So I just want to give everyone a brief overview and check in. And I appreciate you guys taking time tonight and putting me on the agenda. I was uh, very impressed with your facilitator. Thank you. I don't know where you found that person. Uh, so Ben Muldrow, he's uh, done some work with us before. He is um, a principal at Arnett Muldrow, which is one of the preeminent city branding firms in the country. I've done some um, work with Ben over the years, just working with some other downtowns, and he's a well-known speaker and consultant in the Main Street circles. Well, it was a very enthusiastic meeting. There was great participation <laughs> and uh, lots of energy, so I congratulate you on Thank you. pulling off a good one there. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm Any sorry. other comments? Steve. Thank Christy. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Christy, thank you very much for the presentation. So I have a couple suggestions. Sure. Because um, I've been intricately involved with the whole theater restoration project, having served on the Historical Commission twice, mm -hmm. and with the uh, Rochester uh, 
Avon Historical Society. So is there a opportunity, has that concept evolved to where it could be both theater and live music to where it might get a bit more traction and maybe some more funding? Mm -hmm. Don't know. I, I, I would just sure. give you that suggestion. Yeah, absolutely. And secondly, um, I've lived in a town where we did concerts at the top of the parking decks. Mm -hmm. I would hope that we would <laughs> consider that possibly here. I think it would be a wonderful uh, opportunity because people would park there below and mm -hmm. you'd come up to the concert above. Absolutely. Okay. No, I appreciate those suggestions. Actually, the um, east parking platform was engineered to hold events when we built that because uh, engineering for cars is different than engineering for people. And so that was actually engineered with people in mind and has different electrical <coughs> drops over there that we would need to hold something like that. So yes, but I will be happy to pass those suggestions along to site development and the DDA board. Thank you. Thank you. You're talking, the other thing, you're talking about the old Hills Theater? Yes, that was Is that still intact? Is it? Um, yes, there are still some of the projection rooms. As you can tell from the way when you walk through all the elevations, there's some different things in there. It was recently purchased. Um, with, by a new development company. Nick would be familiar with them. I haven't met them yet, and they have been doing some things, but they don't seem to intend to want to rehab it or anything interior, so anything that is still there would still be there if someone was interested in pursuing that. Would it? Mr. Chairman, I believe this little floor is still in there. It's just covered up with the new concrete. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting concept. Mm -hmm. Someone here? Where's, where is that? Um, so the Main Street Plaza was the former Hills Theater. You know yeah. the place where you it never go It was the go Big into. Hills Theater yeah. with the yeah. marquee. I do that, actually. <laughs> you do? Yeah. By it the, well, the upstairs has a bunch of different, like, business suites, mm -hmm. right? Yep. I, there's a massage but the therapist shell of the old <laughs> theater is, <laughs> the shell of the old theater is still there. It, yes. Huh. It's a great idea if someone could... There was a stage in there, and quite honestly, the, the women's club used to do fashion shows in there at one time. Jeez. Very interesting. Christian. Very quickly. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I went to the one you had previously, and I remember they the same topics came out, the, the year-round uh, farmer's market and, you know, the size, you know, where is that presently in that parking lot. And they had talked about moving it or relocating it down by the river, you know, in a sense, and mm -hmm. you know, with food trucks. And, we, and, and so is that a possibility to use it, or do they want to keep the market where it is currently? Sure. So I can't speak for where DDA's head is at this moment, but I can tell you where the plan went um, okay. from where we were before is that um, we ended up settling back on our lot because we own it because the point of entry for us, in addition to doing the project, but then having to purchase property on top of that right. was a little off-putting um, and put a little bit far beyond our reach. Um, but the second piece of that was that operating the indoor market, which is what it had evolved into, and two is going to be like a more like a Flint farmer's market, which would be a hybrid of like a food hall slash market concept. Um, as we started digging into that, it was becoming increasingly clear that it wouldn't have been a sustainable project for the DDA to actually run that on a permanent basis. Right. Um, we did at one point have um, one or two private partners that moved forward to meet with us, and we brought them forward into DDA, but none of them got across the finish line on that. So we still have all the plans, all of those things. So if there is a private developer that's interested in that, call us. Um, but right now, I think DDA is more focused on uh, the front porch project, that's something we talk about quite often because we think it clicks a lot of boxes and that it might be economically a little bit more reasonable for us to accomplish because we really want to get something across the finish line. We think it'd be a value to the community and it's something that has opportunity for grant and donation financing as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming. It's very <coughs> informative and uh, keep up the great work. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to return to item number seven, consideration of a proposed of the proposed changes of the master plan draft and recommendation to city council. Michelle, you came back. back. Good evening, everyone. So I'll be doing something similar. Um, Siona, if you could pull up. So we're going to pull up the draft master plan. It's the same version that you guys um, got in your packet last time. Um, <coughs> And then if you guys have also seen in your memo that um, I received comments from three different commissioners. Um, so I have those written out word for word. Well, all the words that I could read, there are some, some I couldn't. But that's what this two pages. And then I sort of summarize them. So you'll see this table here and then 
the number of people that were in agreement with those topics. So I thought maybe we'd start with the summary because that covers um, the, the broader topics. Um, and then we can move from there. So um, the first one, yes, yeah, and Sienna already has that up. Um, so there was only three that submitted, but I remember the last time I was here, there was a pretty um, much a verbal consensus in removing this section of the master plan that refers to the three properties that were selected, where we did some um, some GIS rendering and we did some we extrapolated some data based on those land uses. So if we can confirm that, that you guys would like to have those removed and used maybe just internally, then I can remove those pages from Anyone the master plan. Anyone differ with that? <clears throat> I, I think we made it clear it's private property. We were not simply not comfortable in targeting those uh, properties in our master plan. Okay. I think I think if it's helpful to show <coughs> types of developments that we'd like to yeah. see that are not specific to properties, I'd be supportive of that. But yes, I was not wanting to take you know an existing business and show what it could be if it wasn't yeah. that business. Do you mean um, to show you images of what? Yeah, yeah of different I, types I of had no issue with images of what different kind of mixed developments could look like. So you could take those there, but just put them on a rectangle and not specific to the property. And, and s similar language or information is very good. We just didn't want it focused on private property. OK, so you're OK with those images? Just remove the parcel boundaries? Just so they don't identify the Yeah, parcels. I think they're OK with the images. But take away any de you know, identifying markers you know, where the river is or you know, the street names or anything like that that would show that's where the property is located. I think by way of example, this is a, a possible development. Just remove any identification markers. Okay. Did I say that right, sir? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the other, so I'll move on to the next one. Um, keep special projects as a tool and align that language in the master plan to support the tool. So. Again, three of you wrote in with that, but I do recall last time that there was pretty strong consensus around that. So if you guys confirm that, then I can... Confirm. Confirmed? <laughs> then I will um, re-put back the old language about okay. <clears throat> uh, special projects. Um, next, removing the mention of tiny homes from the master plan. So. Um, you can see here up there we have all these different building types um, and then in the different zones we say what the desired building types are so basically be removing a row from a table that says tiny home check mark yes that would be the main and then any action that refers to tiny homes confirmed okay. um, Removing language about accessory dwelling units. Are we all familiar with that term? Those are those kind of, they're also called granny flats or in-law units. So they're basically an accessory st structure behind, generally behind a single family home that are used for housing your in-laws, where, where the name came from. So um, there was only two so the other one, all three of you said that, then two commissioners wrote in with that recommendation to remove language regarding ADUs. For me, I, I think this will emerge over time. It's around the U.S., I'm aware of that. My problem with it is that it attacks the concept of single-family zoning. And I think it takes much more of a discussion from the leadership than just putting the statement in the master plan. I think it's a step too far right now until our leaders, something gets proposed, we get our arms around it. But to put it in here, I think, I, I don't want the development community to take the lead from the master plan and charge in and, and push that, well, it's in your document. And you want to wait until they come to you and ask for I, one? That's just me then... personally. That's just me personally. I know it's an emerging trend. I would concur with the chairperson on that. I would concur as well. 
And that's fine. We can do that. I will just say in general, the purpose of a master plan is to get in front of things and have um, a vision around something so that some, when they do come to you, you're ready. As opposed to when they come to you, it could take six months to a year to figure out how we're going to permit it, and then they move on somewhere else. And, and what I'm saying is I would like the six months or a year mm -hmm. to kick it around before the leadership takes a position on it. I don't think anyone's going to get caught flat-footed if someone raises it to us down the road. No. Okay. Um, the other <clears throat> recommendations are around <clears throat> housing as well. So um, removing language that refers to... Um, sort of preventing this trend of demolishing homes and building much larger footprints on those smaller lots. So we had talked about that in the master plan, but um, two commissioners wanted references to that removed. So if you guys have no problem with the larger homes on the smaller lots, then we can remove that language as well. It's been our bread and butter for five years. There's already ordinances about setbacks and size yes. of the lots in the right. house, so I think and it is somewhat controlled. And I would remove that. Yeah, yeah, and that's the market. It's the yeah. market. Yeah. Let the market do it, and I probably don't want one right next to my house, but well, that's the market. That's, that's right. Right. Right, and others might not either. Okay, um, and then there was basically. Uh, maybe not every single one, but uh, a recommendation to remove all of the sustainability recommendations. So um, I'm not sure if that was in our original proposal, but uh, the idea of, of that was that the city had gone through that sustainability framework. And so we're trying to incorporate all of that into the master plan as that's our most <coughs> comprehensive document that has the most statutory weight behind it. So we're trying to integrate everything um, into one place, but if you all want to remove that, then we can take that link. We can take all those recommendations out, but then I suppose it's just going to be a section about sustainability without any follow-up, really. I thought what was included was way beyond our sustainability tool. They're the exact same things as the sustainability But I saw tool. things like converting the city fleet to electric and right. mm -hmm. things of that sort, which I didn't believe belong, belonged in there. I do think our sustainability tool should be well recognized in there. Right. So can reference be made just to the existing sustainability tool that we use currently and remove yeah. any of the, the language that goes above and beyond what's already been established? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. So that's the summary of them. Do you guys want to go through bullet point by bullet point on there? We'll probably, as we go through them, have already addressed most of them, but just to make sure we don't miss anything. Can we revisit the, the first one on the summary? <clears throat> so I don't know if we've done this in the past. Do we need a uh, pictorial um, representations of housing that we would consider? I mean. Frankly, from my perspective, it's, I feel like it's going to be hard for me to get that exactly right. Um, if you guys want to leave those, we can. I don't think I, for the purposes of what something looks like, those are the best You mean the pictures of houses or right. actual so, buildings? No, the, the, the three sites that like we referenced. Oh, yeah. Right. So yes. to Commissioner Hauser's point, we take all the demarcations out of it. Yeah. Do we even need the pictures? I mean. I don't necessarily think so um I, I agree i agree with that but I, i'm not sure how helpful those are right uh without the numbers attached to them the context in which they're in so the uh, the other thing i could do is provide actual images but that makes me a little nervous about getting that spot on for your preferences um unless you all want to s send siana photos to send to me but um <clears throat> but a discussion about what to do with major pieces of property that may emerge mm -hmm. without being specific is probably good. Okay, so what, what is not specific, rezoning. just general land yeah. uses? Yeah. yeah, a more modern approach to developing large parcels as they may come up, what should be considered. <clears throat> 
Mm -hmm. So we have we have that language, so we can I just say. Do, yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess it sort of depends on the parcel, though, to figure out what should go sure, there. So, right. do you want me to just say, in general, these are the land uses that we want? If if they're not tied to a place, right. I'm not really sure what benefit that brings. Yeah, because it could be anything. Yeah, could it be could be right. on a site you don't Something want it to be. Something completely unex unexpected. It right. come out of nowhere. Yeah. The, I'm so okay the, if you will leave it off. Those Im these three images that yeah. we're looking at? Yeah. See that one more time, Dennis, here? Leave those images out. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. I think we already have, like, there's some rendering in here that talks about, you know, single family and the mid-rise and how, like, all the missing middle housing. Generic. I think that's more beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. You have a dis difficult task because you <laughs> had to come in midstream and pick up somebody else's work. And I think you've done a really good job of doing that. It's not easy Thank to you. do in public. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, th this isn't easy because we just delete those three pages. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> that's not hard. It's as easy as it gets, right? <laughs> um, okay. So I think we're good on this, this table here with this summary. Would you guys like to go through... It's two pages, but um, bullet point by bullet point to make sure we're in agreement with them. I, I think most of them we've already touched on, so it'll be. I think it'll be pretty quick. Sure. It just once I leave here, you know, then this is going to council. Okay, go. So I want to oh. make sure. Oh. <laughs> okay, so page thirty-six. <clears throat> so you can see. So all of these were asked to be removed. So when I read them, if you guys agree, then we'll just. We'll remove them. So continue to provide a wide variety of housing formats at a range of densities to ensure shelter for residents at all stages of life. So that's what that um, that image you just referred to, the missing middle. Yeah, what's that's wrong what with, that's referring to. What's wrong with this is like a policy. Say that again. I, I guess what's wrong with having that in the document. It's a fine statement. Okay, so we'll keep that. Well, so, so Commissioner so be here. I, 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 we removed names, but if you, if you wrote that in, you can pass so, up. So, Sarah's not Commissioner B. I am. I, I, I will fess up to being Commissioner B. <laughs> uh, I will say. I will say that. And I was going. I to. welcome dialogue. <laughs> so, and I and, and really, when I when I put no, it was more. You know, no, we shouldn't just do this without discussion. So this, okay. the, so I didn't want it to infer that. Well, I wasn't going to vote for okay. this thing if <laughs> unless every single one of these was no. Sure. I was just going through it at work, and it was like, no, I don't know about that. So I just, I just wrote no, and then I mimeographed, mimeographed. I made a copy. Um, and gave it to Siona. Wow, where did that come from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah mimeograph. <laughs> to the machine. Yeah. Ink all over the place. You probably have one still at Waterford Mine. <laughs> I can still smell it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so, so it wasn't, no, I'm <sighs> adamant on that. I was just like, well, I think we should talk about that as a group. So I think that's where these came from. I will say, I mean, it says continue. You guys already do a pretty good job of this. You have quite a diverse housing stock, we right? Do. So mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's really just keep on keep on keeping on mm -hmm. if you guys are okay with mm -hmm. that that kind of statement is fine okay mm -hmm. so I just noticed these last three bullet points we've already addressed so the second and we'll just go to the second and third one partner with organizations to provide a rent to own program um, that's just too I don't see it I think it's private sector yeah that's what a land contracts for yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, adjust permitted densities and percentage of landed districts where housing is permitted to accommodate desired residential growth. So that is basically a, a follow-up from the first bullet point of if we're going to have residential growth, we might need to consider um, denser zoning districts. So you'd have to kind of change those percentages. See, that's where I, that comes before us, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they'll... they'll um, so density is already zoned for, right? But this is kind of a, a recommendation for considering if you need to rezone certain areas denser for to accommodate residential growth. But we already have that ability, though, correct? Or the zoning board would have that? It depends on where it is. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's a special project. Then. Special project we we have we done. Do. Right. Yeah. Correct. Otherwise, you're bound by the the zoning ordinance. Zoning ordinance. And they would have to go get the variance. <coughs> well, it wouldn't be a variance. They'd have to get a zoning change. Zoning complete change. zone. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so, so to me, this just one we we can do it already, and then two, it was just to me. Again, as you, I think you said, more of a, an attack on the single family, yeah, you know, district. Okay, but, let's but, leave but, that but, out. But that's well, one thing I would say is, and, and I, I should know this, but I, I guess I, I'm not positive. But you know, a lot of communities you can propose a, a PUD, mm -hmm. a planned unit development. You don't have to be in a PUD district per se, but you can propose one. Um, and it just allows flexibility. <laughs> and we don't, I don't think we have that, but that's what we've been using <coughs> the special, like special projects, projects for. Is. Right. So yeah. So it's sort of super zoning. Yeah. You, can't, you can't propose a special project anywhere, right? No. So that's, that's a little bit of a difference. So Did you consider that a PUD? Your special projects? It's yeah. reminiscent. I mean, they're similar, but it's. Very similar. I mean, PUDs are usually a zone, an overlay district, or treated as a special land use. And you guys have kind of taken elements of all of those. And I'm not as familiar with your special projects. It's kind of, it's pretty unique, I think, to, to the city, and I've never worked with one. Yeah. But when I, I look through it, it's, it has elements of that. <clears throat> it, it provides a lot of latitude to both parties. Flexibility, innovation. Yeah. 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 But only in those districts. Yeah. <clears throat> so designated, so... It doesn't allow any flexibility if you're outside those districts to do something unique or different. You're bound by the zoning district and ordinance. So I, not necessarily something we're going to solve today, but if I was going to put a little food for thought, it might be that is a um, a common development tool. PUD. Yeah. yeah. It may be as we get into the South Street stuff. I mean, that's what we talked about. That's our future. There's a lot of land down there. And maybe we need something like that down there. Yeah, I, 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 I like the idea of allowing some discretion because yeah. what it does is it allows a developer to come up with something to be created potentially and it allows us the flexibility to say yes or no. So you're not giving anything permitted by right. It's still... A discretionary item. You think we should have it in the ordinance now? I, I think it would be uh, good for consideration. Absolutely. What do you think? I mean, it essentially makes a whole city special projects because it can be proposed <coughs> right. essentially everywhere. With certain, you know, conditions and restrictions. Yeah. And there's different ways to do them. Like, like you know, you would you would still have to establish an underlying zoning district potentially. It could be an overlay on top of. Where I live on the east side was done with a PUD many years ago. But that several hundred acres were done that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and oftentimes it, it allows you to vary from the bulk standards of the zoning ordinance. Yeah. That's uh, the so are you that. are you recommending this bullet point three that we're talking about to rewrite that so it's saying more or less along the lines of creating a PUD district? Not necessarily. I'm kind of going off the rails here. It's don't free for all, man. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of be but careful it's what you ask for, you might get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's something we probably want our planner to run by us here in the future. Yeah. Okay. I mean, just keep in mind, this is meant to last for 10 years. So yeah. saying now just is putting it on the docket. It's If it's not here and you want to do it, you might have to amend this, which is a process you'll have to go through. That was five years, no? Yeah, five, yeah, you look at it in five years and see if it needs to be updated. Yeah. But often the, the horizon can be much longer oh. than five years. Mm-hmm. So when, when we put things on here, just to be clear, it's, um, it's, it's going out 10 years, so it's not saying that this is something you're going to do tomorrow. It's saying this is something that we want to explore, mm -hmm. and that way, if we do do it, we have a backup. We have support here. So, I mean, you're not going to be... What if it was be, just uh, mentioned in the same statement, special projects or... Planned unit development. Then it's in the document. Is Vidya on the line? I don't think so. Okay. <coughs> I'd be curious about her perspective since she probably does the special projects for you all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, we still, I mean, in theory, we're move, just moving this forward. We still have 63 days or something to. 
to. That's right. right. You, you do have the ability in the next 63 days right. to modify this Absolutely. further. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Those could be mentioned as a tool then. Yeah. yeah. A potential We could tool. say something as broad as consider PUD as a land use tool. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're okay with that. I yeah. could live with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> And it's in our history. I, I don't know how they did it back when they did my side of town, but that was done with the PUD. Yeah. But it's not there now, so they must have taken that. And, and the thing about special projects, we can say no. We can say no. Right? Yeah. Right. yeah. We have absolute right to right. say no. And we can say no here, and we can say no on We're the city council. We're not compelled to right. go along. But it's a tool yeah. that we need to keep. <clears throat> keep. And what's nice is that it ends up being typically a give and take, where right. there's a benefit to the developer because they can vary from the right. standards. Yeah. But then there's a recognizable benefit to the community too. Can right. You oh, sorry. Get yeah. something that you, right. you can't simply can't get otherwise. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. And, and yes, it can potentially put us in a spot where we have to make a vote that we don't want to. You We've know, or it's not, been down not, that road not too. pleasant, <laughs> but just once. That's, just once. Yeah. <laughs> More than once, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, but you know that. That's so we we'd be okay. Right. We'd be happy with it. And sorry to Planning Commissioner A that we skipped you, but I will just say we've already discussed all of those points. Mm -hmm. so okay. We're clear on those. Planning Commissioner A is okay with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Planning Commissioner B feels a little better about myself <laughs> now that you kind of agreed You're to the first. You're not scorned and shamed. Yeah. <laughs> little. There's no anonymity. We. <laughs> I know we kind of went through this quickly, but um, and I know saw it was on the action plan. But one of these items, fourth bullet point, amend the zoning ordinance allow duplexes, accessory dwelling units, and residential districts. We talked about taking that out, but I, I do think that we need to give some thought to accessory dwelling units mm -hmm. at some point, and there should be some sort of tool to address it. I mean, we're going to have continue to have more of an aging, you know, population and residents who <clears> might have. You know, a family member or something, but I just don't want the development community to get ahead of the city. I and so I therefore I'm strict like on my single family it zoning. Probably be individuals versus large developers no, yeah. and doing something like yeah. this. Yeah. But you could have a Smith Homes kind of a guy who whose next wave is to come in to town and develop accessory dwelling units. And then not to be too forward thinking here, but you think, you know, okay, I get the idea, and I, I'd like the idea, candidly, you know, yeah. of, you know, you have a little place in the back and have a little, you know, area to, to, that you could live in. How do you make sure that doesn't become an Airbnb? So you yeah. have yeah. your Which neighbors. Which will be part of the range, and some, by the a way. A whole bunch of, every week there's someone new in there, there, and so that's the thing. It's a slippery slope. Conceptually, I like it. I think it's kind of a cool idea, but at the same time, you know, can you tie in some type of restriction where it can't be used as a rental unit? I'm thinking more from like an in-law suite or even, mm. uh, you know, if the we happened to have used to own a home that had a second-story garage, it would have been amazing, especially during COVID, to have an office with a bathroom. Yeah. Couldn't run a bathroom, right? Yes. Like yeah. that would add a lot of value, I think, for, for people to have. I know in Ann Arbor, office. they're actually separate they're, occupants. They're not the same family, what mm -hmm. they're talking about doing there. Oh, accessory yeah. dwelling units in Ann Arbor can, can, be, <coughs> can be a second anyway. source of income on the property. Mm -hmm. And that's where I have the clash with single family. But to, to be honest, I'm, so I live in Ann Arbor. Um, they're, not really being, they're not really being built. They're, they're expensive to build. You have to extend sewer out there because you have to have but that. But they're circling and, all around it. You, you, can <laughs> see the, it's coming. you can see the comments from the commissioners that they're, they're going to make a move. Oh, they're, they're already permitted. Yeah. They're permitted. But that's different than the mother-in-law suite. This is, this is multiple family housing on a no, single it's the family same thing. lot. It's well, not I don't the, think I don't think we allow like a mother, an in-law suite at all. No, no. You, you don't even do. allow like an office and a bathroom kind no. of, or we don't. But hmm. so I, again, I know it's coming. Um, I don't want to be the herald that uh, puts it out there in front of the development community. Is the fear that the development community is going to read this and say, okay, they allow it, and then hundreds are going to be built? Well. Okay. Or try to be built. Right now it's under our control, and if we. It's always going to be under your control. Not if we make certain statements so, in the master plan. It, it may not be under our control. That's, that's what I'm worried about. So, I don't want it assumed that 
we're willing to break down our single family zoning standards to support somebody's idea that they can put a carriage house on their property and rent it for a thousand a month or something like that. Yeah. I don't know what that was. I don't know if that's the Patty had commissioner. Patty had a comment. Oh, Patty? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, you, you know, accessory buildings could be a, a pool house, you know, I mean, that's different. I, I, I know there's a concern, but there, there needs to be some sort of language to, um, to prohibit the multifamily dwellings on, on a <coughs> single family residential site. I mean, it doesn't that prohibit it when we're saying it's a single family oh. residential site. I believe right now it's prohibited, isn't it, Jim? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's prohibited. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so if they put, if they want an accessory building, you know, such like as a, as a pool house or a shed or something, it has to come in for site review. That's okay, but that's, but it wouldn't be occupied as a residence. Right. Right. So I'm, I'm just wondering how to allow duplexes and assess, oh, accessory dwelling unit. All right. That's the word. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Sorry, I had eye surgery, so I'm my <laughs> reading is a little off. That's okay. Well, like I said with the PUD, I mean, if you had language in here that said, you know, consider if this is a feasible option, you're not tying, you're tying yourself to research, you're not yeah. tying yourself to a policy. Yeah. Um, and again, that is, uh, that means over the next five to ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I... Personally, I mean, I, I don't mind. I mean, the ma the master plan is not covering the details that the zoning ordinance would. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the zoning ordinance is, is would have to be changed yes. to allow these things, and that's where you can hammer into the details and restrictions and, right. and everything with it. Mm -hmm. so, and, and so, if if a master plan, if the statement is just basically indicating that we recognize that this is a topic, and over the next course of years something that we may need to look at consider if that's something that we should say in the master plan I, I, that that doesn't bother me because it's not really necessarily even driving at what our opinion is on it yeah you don't you have know? to say change the zoning ordinance to allow this you would say something like research the possibilities of ADUs in in not not tiny homes so I think no, if we not. just change, because like the action plan right now, our strategy says permit ADUs in single family and two family residential districts. If yeah, we just we'd have said, to change that. Consider, mm -hmm. right. consider you know, future right. use of ADUs. Yes. It, and Mr. Chair, if I understand, I think what I'm hearing you say is you don't want the inclusion of this to be looked at as an endorsement of That's it. correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. right. And I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, as long as that next one goes away, tiny homes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so no, no tiny homes. How did they get here, and like how did they get there in the first yeah, place? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Ask the, the author, yes. It just came out of uh, We had a proposal for one once. Maybe that's, that's where it came from. from. Okay, so pages right. 115 so, to 120. Oh, sorry, Commissioner, go ahead. Go ahead. I believe oh, she so what, yeah, are, are, are you going to address what we think we should amend this, this, this uh, bullet to? So what I have is just changing the word permit um, to consider or maybe research the feasibility of something along those lines <coughs> of ADUs. Is that okay? I think so. Okay. okay, great. So for pages 115 through 120, I've already crossed off. I was reading through these as we were talking. So bullet point two through two, three, four, five, six, seven, we've already talked about. Um, they're about housing and density and that, and those things. So um, I'll just go from the first bullet point and then down to the, the bottom ones. But create a recreation and open space district and a quasi, and a public and quasi public district. So that uh, that recommendation is just kind of to add an extra layer of protection to your parks to have them be a separate zone. They're often in like an R one zone. That's that's all that is. But um, okay. there could be concerns about that. Then I'm happy to hear what they are. Commissioner <coughs> B. Or if that's not if that, relevant, that. could we use it to change uh, <coughs> zoning of the land down by the river? No, that's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, if, if you get, if you think that's fine, I'm fine with that. 
I mean, like I said, I just as a broad just, statement, yeah. I, I don't have any problem <coughs> okay. with it. So, it, 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 to me, it was like create. Like, I, I looked at that as almost make make the parks a separate. Right, a separate zoning district. That's what it is saying. Right, and and mm -hmm. so do we need do we need that? Get, that that's my, my you thought. You don't was, need it. Yeah. You definitely don't need it. It's just an extra layer of protection right. for. So that you know, that was my take. Asset. Well, we have yeah. these parks; they're never going anywhere. Right. Especially if they're deeded. If they're deed in the deed, they have to remain parks. They're pretty safe. Probably some of them are. Maybe. But not but them. but, I'm <coughs> I'm fine with that if that's. So every one of these we're talking about. It has an actionable, so amend, create. That's yeah, what right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a planning tool. So softer language, yeah. possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that's yeah. And and maybe just use it to contemplate or consider, consider yeah. or suggest. Right. You know, don't have to do it. Yeah. Consider. We'll the, you know, I'll consider get the it. Source out, and we'll start going through. Consider it. Yeah. Yes, but that's the idea. <laughs> we'll consider anything. Yeah, well, that's really. kind of the thing. It, it might start to become meaningless if the, all, all right. of the actions start with consider. <laughs> but again, it's a planning tool. It's a tool. It's a yeah. tool. Okay. So then the next one. I've, so the next one that we haven't addressed is adopt a climate action plan that includes a greenhouse gas inventory. I feel like I'm pretty clear, you guys. Well, again, that's a no. again, that seems like something. <coughs> we may do that someday. Well, but it seems. Something the state would do or the county yeah. would do. What, Several what cities do, do it. <coughs> okay. Several so. cities do that. But it's sort of like that'll come upon us. Yeah. That that seems like um, maybe something that larger cities do would be a yeah. guess with resources yeah. and things to really come up with something that's we're three point five and, square miles. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. right. Yeah. We're not gonna have public transportation right here. Right. We're not putting in. That's not in here. That's not in here, is it? <laughs> just, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> no, but it's, it's on some list, but it's not in here. <laughs> okay, so that, that seems pretty clear. Um, so use Soul Smart resources. I don't know if Blaine, you wanted to talk about this one in more detail, but <coughs> we have a no here for pursuing a gold or silver. Right. Or gold Again, a no for discussion. Yeah, I wasn't sure. like not going to vote for. <laughs> Put, formalizing a plan. Yeah. <coughs> Blaine, that's probably something you're doing or uh, probably have to do. Oh. Do you know what it is? I don't know what it is. I, do not. I don't know what it is either. Or it's Googling. It's a little smart. Yeah. <laughs> so nationally over the last, again, Blaine Wing, city manager, just for everybody else. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Glad you could make me. Thanks. Um, um, it's something that over the last 10 years, the uh, ICMA, the International Association of Managers, uh, so across the United States as well as uh, uh, globally, has been promoting is basically the use of uh, solar, um, both for residential and businesses. Um, currently, we don't, you know, uh, basically uh, have any uh, language towards that. We've already put solar on both the fire station and our new uh, public works but there's not a uh, goal to have... Uh, it's not in the building code or correct. anything Correct, like there's that. not, yeah. So um, more and more communities are going with, it's kind of like a LEED certified building where, uh, again, it's more efficient, um, having uh, potentially solar power, how we use it on both our fire station and at our, our public works is it actually warms the water so that we basically aren't, you know, we already have water that's warmed instead of having to pay for it. Um, it's so bigger ones potentially could have uh, where you're actually putting like a, uh, a large battery in sure. maybe a house and potentially could be a battery backup for your house. Um, but right now we wouldn't allow that solar there, panels on a roof. Would we allow that in a single family zoning? So I, again, video would probably have to answer it, but I don't okay, believe so. so. Uh, really? I believe we, just, we do. We do. It's Nick. We do allow it. Oh, okay. We have we nothing do. again. We just we just doesn't, approved one. It doesn't say it is allowed. It, okay, so it doesn't exclude it. Okay, so I guess what That's what, what what this does is basically promote it, saying we're trying to get to a certain okay. standard. And um, actually, on the fire department, we produce 9.2 kilowatts of electricity. We don't produce hot water. What electricity we don't use goes back into the grid, and we get credit on future bills. Good. Staying correct. Doesn't Sorry. doesn't public works one is the that work. that extra power doesn't seem to make it to my street on a regular basis <laughs> yeah. so. or your bill huh? <laughs> friction loss. <laughs> so again, is it necessary or required? Just more and more communities are uh, starting to do. Again, I don't so have I don't, any problems don't with the thoughts being included. Yeah. 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 Ye
no okay. problem. So we're keeping that? Yeah. Keeping that. Okay. Could you explain it a little bit more? Because that's a proper term. I'd like to The at designation? Least... No, the Soul Smart. What does that mean? Where's oh, it from? That's, that's the company, isn't it? Uh, that's the organization really is. Just put a line in explaining what it is so people know when they read that. Got it. <clears throat> it's, a, put the website. it's a organization that gives out silver and gold designations. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> okay, so we'll move past the fleet. I think there's consensus on that. Doesn't need to be in here. The the last two bullet points that I will say are part of the sustain sustainability framework because they do have to do with stormwater. Um, so mm -hmm. these are some tactics that are being used in the zoning ordinance to help retain stormwater and reduce instances of flooding so um and, and the only thing i brought that up was just yeah. that do we want to require that that's what it says not yet right think. so i mean that was my issue so this would be residential commercial anything, anything? yeah mm -hmm. um I, w I guess what's a high level that'd be up to us to define yeah or? so high levels of impervious pavement i would say are like you know 50 percent or more of your property is impervious but that's a threshold you guys could determine um, so high levels would probably mainly be commercial and industrial well if you think about residential if you can have 30 percent building coverage and with the garages in the back I mean you could easily hit 50 percent with driveways and um, patios, patios. so then we're talking about every residential home needing to put in storage tanks and not accessing yeah. oh but or at so least revise the language so that it's I, not at least like, I'm not yeah. saying I'm against it, I just want to like think through what it means. That's right. not the intention of this. So if that's what how we it's being read, then we absolutely are going to have to think it's, about this. It's, it's going to be imposed on us, I'm sure. And I'd love to encourage more, right. less right. impervious. Right, of course. Yeah, but to require but, a right. So, so do you just want me to soften the verb require? Soften the verb. Yeah. Well, the other thing I would add to that <clears throat> though is, um, I, I think the the best solution is if you had a regional approach to stormwater. Sure. You know, I, I would not want to see underground tanks on every piece of property across the city. No, I'd rather no. have it looked regionally. So I, I, we got to be. I think we need to be careful with how we're stating this. Yeah. So you'd have to work with your watershed councils and with SEMCOG on that. Okay. Okay. So then the other consideration, and maybe we don't need all of these. I have a. Go ahead, Patty. Question here, is I know we we do not have a percentage of impervious or of impervious um, uh, materials on our properties. Mm -hmm. Is this a time when we can uh, include this language? You would if you were going to update the zoning ordinance to follow this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You would come up with that threshold. And I would All right. encourage you to do that with an engineer. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so then should we proceed without the mayor? This, this is... Just yeah, so we go, can hear what his concern is about this next one. <clears throat> These are all storm water related, so we might not have to use all of them. But um, what's happening in some cities in the metro Detroit area is creating a storm water drainage or credit system. So that, um, <coughs> again, for mainly larger industrial or commercial buildings, like you're going to be charged for the amount of impervious surface you have because you're causing additional burden to our storm water system. Myself, I would not want to see that language in there. I agree. I agree. I would, ra I would rather have specific requirements side by side on what they have to comply with. And if they don't, I don't want it hanging over people's heads. That well, yeah, I don't want to give somebody the ability to, uh, you know, pay extra yeah. in order to not provide the stormwater management. Yeah. Buy, the, buy their way out of it. Yeah. Right. OK, so let's go on to the second page. So let's strike in that one. That's what I heard from that, okay. right? Okay. Um, encourage or require any new development installs pervious pavement for parking lots. No. It's a hard no for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, Bridge. Pervious fine with. Yeah. Pervious pavement does not last, does it? Well, I think there's maintenance issues with it. Um, it's weaker. Yeah. And and again, I would not want to require. That's for sure. Okay, so for anything that says encourage, you know, at some point you'd have to determine how do you do that. Yeah. So you'd have to come up with incentives or whatever actually <coughs> follows that verb of encourage. So 
That'd be another action at another point. Um, again, so let's, I'm sure we'll need to change this word require, but um, green roofs and rain barrels are another thing that businesses can do to keep water out of the storm. But they can be mentioned in your language. Yeah, it's an option. Right. What do you mean mentioned? <clears throat> Encourage. Mention, <laughs> encouraging the tax <laughs> mention. The word we just said that. These, consider. These are all consider, right? Consider and yeah. encourage. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I can allow. Yes. But nothing that says allow we're going to do this. Yeah, so I can write about it, but do you want yeah. it as an action at all? Because if not, then we'll remove it. Does our zoning not allow for this right now? Is that? I don't think it disallows for and by green roof, is it just an environmental frame? Is it like a garden on top? I'm not trying to be a wise yeah, no, guy. It, but it's, meant, it's just meant to capture more water so that it doesn't go down capture the storm and drain and go yeah. into the... Is that allowed now? Yeah, I think the <laughs> meeting house. Has yeah. It. Yeah. Then if it's allowed now, yeah, then I don't know if it necessarily needs to. Okay. Mr. Chairman, all, all these yes. requires, you're way stepping over the boundaries here into engineering. You, you can't just, you have to have engineering... But that dialogue to say require a green roof, that's a hundred thousand dollar roof. Yeah. So these, yeah. This is not, I don't see how this is master plan stuff. Support, this is can an existing this is thought process it. stuff that is way deeper than a master plan. It's, I get the idea of encouraging sustainability and encouraging green. All this stuff is good stuff, but you can't words like require, we'll get sued. We can't we yeah. can't do that. I, 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 think, I think you're reading us well. We don't want this document to be misinterpreted as a uh, a mandate a mandate yeah and some of the language we first saw i think several of us feared that that's what it would become so we'd get beat over the head with our own document which the last well, one yeah. okay. note taken okay thank okay. you okay so creating i think these next two came from the subcommittee that had um a woman on it from the library or the community garden okay um created and dis uh, that should probably say create and distribute a rain garden guidebook um i don't know if maybe that's something that maybe the watershed would council would like on. to do that yeah that's yeah. not something yeah. Really. Not, not us. Yeah. No. yeah it's voluntary yeah. no um <coughs> same with the next one about yeah. Yeah. discussions with the other governments anything referenced watershed yeah Okay, so then uh, if I cross out those next two, transition to cellular-based parking, that was from the sub-consultant, but I think, Mayor, your, your, con or your comment was that you're already doing that. So I don't know why the sub-consultant... The meters that we have, you pay with an app. Yeah. Or a credit card for or whatever. For, for every, every, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For every single lot. Aren't they, you know? They're currently 2G and we're yeah. oh. going to 4, so right. I don't yeah. know. That we don't well, know. we're gonna cost. we're gonna do that separately. We don't need. Right. Yeah. Okay. So remove. Yep. Yes. Um. Did, I'm and sorry, I'm did, guessing these next two are removed just based on TNC. The general. Okay. Um. Yeah. What is the that's answer? that's the larger acronym for like um ride sharing. Um. I, I, yeah, we don't. What are they called? Well, we can't. I mean, Network we can't do anything on Main Street. That's a right. state-owned yeah. road. I would just remove the last two bullet items. Yeah. 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 And did we do the? Got Is, rid of the Clinton River well, watershed one yep, too. Yeah, we got rid of yeah. okay. those. Is there last an issue one, with maybe. adding? Could we consider adding charging stations? Well, they should be mentioned. I mean, it's yeah, definitely funny. the thing of the future. Yeah. So someone who I mean, made the comment make them more apparent right. so out of the open. Consider adding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and that's good. Yeah, let's look into the cost and yeah. how does it get funded and is there enough demand? But it's forward thinking. Yeah. There's ones yeah, over here. Two right? Already, just it would yeah, be right added additional. Right we already have two. Oh. Do you know if they get used very often? Do you have uh, use meters yeah. on them? Yeah, they're used all the we, time. We do, and they do. Okay, good. And do you have to pay for those, or is it? Quarter an hour, quarter an hour, or a dollar an hour. Dollar an hour. Okay. Okay. That's pretty cheap. That's I think we're going to see a lot of them. Can Can I ask a question on the before to Commissioner C? That's on the action plan relating to the stormwater. I just didn't know what this meant. Planning Commissioner C? No, no. Before we go on to C, oh, it's related sorry. to stormwater. It's yeah. on page 118 of the action strategies that still related to the stormwater. It says move downtown's back alley 
alleys to the stormwater system from the sewer system? We already did I'm that. I'm referring to Blaine on that. Both sides? <coughs> yeah, there's, um, I think they're all separated now. And so they go into storm, not sanitary. That's correct. We're just talking like the main downtown. Yeah. Storm. Yeah, yes, yes. We're just saying unless there's one that we didn't finish. So Nick's, Nick's Which you never know. Of course. All of them, all known ones. Okay. Yeah, we went through an inventory years ago and identified them all and had some on private, some public, and I believe we've att attacked all of them now. Okay. What about any addressing any of the residential alleys? <clears throat> they just go to the storm. They don't go to sanitary. They just roll. They, they roll to the street and then ultimately get into. Well, the yeah, but a lot of the dirt ones don't. They don't roll to the street, right? With a lot of the new houses coming in, changing the elevations, you've got. Well, they, they still have to flooding. grade. They, they still they can't do that. So ultimately, either there's a rear yard drain put in, or there's an underground pipe somewhere. But alleys are a whole different story. We've got a. We have a plan, but we don't. We have many, many streets on the west side don't even have storm sewers that are blocked. So right. it's just right now it's surface drainage to the nearest gas base. The alleys but are. They don't go to the sanitary. The they're all different. Very yeah. neglected, aren't they? Yeah. Well, and they're all yeah. different and have different. Some are vacated. Yeah, well, I'm I mean, just asking: all, should yeah. we have we address like the downtown back alley? Should we have some sort of plan so in ten years we're addressing? Other areas. Is there storm in the uh, residential alleys? <coughs> Very rarely. Well, it's not bad to have that as a goal. I would not disagree with that. It's just surface right now. Right. Right. Okay. Well, and it, maybe it's improving areas where they don't have the surface. Well, we could put it in as a, as a, just a, uh, a statement, looking at the residential alley system. Yeah. So Especially think, relative to stormwater. That's. Forward. That's forward thinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good statement. I, I think so. There is an alley map, isn't there, in the appendix? Correct. There is. So, so what would you guys like the action to be? Uh, evaluating the stormwater system for the residential alleys, or okay. but but maybe it's beyond the alleys because I think you mentioned that some of the streets on the west side don't have stormwater drainage. So it doesn't Correct. sound like they do in the older sections. I don't, is that neat or is that something? It finds I mean, when we do complete, street. yeah, when we do complete streets, then we would put them in. But yeah, that that that's just a normal. That would be a goal to, uh, to capture all stormwater. You know, but we do that. It's just going to take decades. As Nick was noting, as we uh, upgrade our streets, yeah. we're we're working with our engineers to do that. That's a best practice. Yeah. But okay. in yeah. our, our current state, there are some that are, it's almost grandfathered until we get to them, they're not going to have them. And it would be too costly to just put in the storm drain before we would actually do what we call a complete street where we're actually going to go in and actually work on the utilities as well as storm. These streets you're doing now, have you put leads into the alleys? So you could pick that up someday, or we've uh, addressed where I guess there's a, uh, there's been some leads, or we've capped where they can be connected into in the okay. future. Um, so the engineers have re reviewed that, but uh, um, yeah, it's it's a challenge because as the mayor was noting, you know, from gravel to dirt to partially asphalt or asphalt or partially grass, some vacated, some not, some partially mm -hmm. vacated. There's portions of some are passable on one way, not right. People through. have taken them over, <coughs> you know, think it's their backyard now. I mean, it's every, everything, oh, yeah. and we have to get the snow plows through a lot of them, and and then the chief has to get his <coughs> equipment. So I mean, so Sarah, if it's mentioned mm -hmm. uh, in the language, you're okay with it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then for planning commissioner C, uh, I that just would reviewed them and I me, think we've the basically guilty party there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call you out. I, I feel completely guilty now, so now I want to pass some of the, the guilt here <laughs> on to. Well, I think you're actually free from any guilt. Cause I, I think we've honestly gone Covered over them all. all of I these. Do too. Yes. Um, so uh, the last thing to discuss then is timing. So, Blaine, is this on the city council's agenda for Monday? No. So it'll go to them to the next meeting. If, if you guys were to pass it, the next, if you were to recommend to council that it be approved for 63-day distribution, then it will go to 
I guess not their next meeting since that's on Monday, but the following meeting, and then it would go into the two-month period of review for the public. And yeah. I would present to them the, the master plan with all of these changes. Do we need to see a document before we send it on to council, or are we comfortable enough that we've had pretty much had our say and our input? Enough? Yeah, yeah I'm certainly, I don't. Yeah, wouldn't I, want you to drive back from Ann Arbor one no. more time to present a copy. <laughs> <laughs> but but could, could we oh, see it though? I mean, yeah. a copy of it? Sorry, what was the request? Well, when you, when you have a document prepared to give to council, make sure the planning commission gets a copy of that. Sure. They just email it to us. Yeah, just email it to us. So yeah. this will come before council on November 8th. Nove November 8th, is that right, Sienna? That is correct. Because... Yeah, I mean, Blaine and I confirmed the agenda for Monday. I, we, we could put it on the agenda, but then I think council people would say they well, haven't had enough time. Your to, and especially, especially with these changes. Sure. Now, now my... my I thought I, you should just stay over here. <laughs> I, I always say my sense of the council is that these changes will make the passing of it much easier. Much easier. Right. Okay. I would just add, as she doesn't have a completed document for me to upload it in, as soon as this meeting's over, to the agenda packet for Monday would be pretty so difficult. So next, I, next yeah. year, I would at least say, so you know, then let's then let's go to November twenty third, the day. Yeah, after. I, I don't know how quickly she. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So for tonight, I would actually have to have the document. Yeah. That she's when, whenever, kind of whenever, whenever, whenever you're 23rd, free. Whenever you're free. That gives you time. November eighth, we can do because so the packet I'm sure will go out November first. But to the mayor's point, yeah. let's give council enough time to digest. Um, November twenty third. That's the one after Lanya. Yeah. Particularly after we've taken so much time. I mean, they should have. Yes. Obviously. The yes. Same mm -hmm. amount of time. No, they actually move it because we have a festival. We turn on our lights, so we move oh, it to it's Tuesday. It's Thanksgiving week. It's the right. Tuesday. Tuesday. It's the, Tuesday. It's the council meeting. It is the, the it is the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, right. we have to have actually by charter two meetings, so our council is very dedicated. Okay. They will be here. Okay. Okay. We can do that. And that's a Tuesday, correct? Tuesday, November. 23rd. Now you need a motion from us tonight. Yes. To send it on to council. Does it have to say anything special? Just to. Yeah, we approved it. Just to move it to city council for distribution, recommending distribution as required under the <coughs> act. Okay. Somebody want to make that motion? So moved. Yeah. Support. Steve, Steve moves with, and the mayor supports. With Her. the changes we went through tonight. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? The roll call, please. <clears throat> Chairman McGee. Yes. Vice Chairman Lord. Yes. Mayor Bixen. Yes. yes. <laughs> Council Member Sage. Yes. Commissioner Clark Martin. Yes. Hauser. Yes. King. Yes. Thank you all very much for your patience and your insights, and I think we're going to end up with a good document here. Thank okay, you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you much. Uh, public comment number nine. Sianna, anyone on deck? There is none. She said there is none? Correct. Okay, thank you. There is no one. Anyone else have anything to speak? Okay, good. Shanna, number 10, upcoming agenda items for November 1st. Yes, so we will have the consideration of a site plan to remodel the existing State Farm Insurance Agency, including the addition of a covered porch located at 415 West University. We will also have the discussion regarding the concept of the redevelopment for 704 Woodward Avenue. Is that Solaronix? That, that is. Is that Solaronix? Um, okay. Yes, it is. So yeah. That's it at this time, as you guys have already um, received the report from the DDA about the business session today. So we had the call in the last meeting <laughs> from someone we don't know. Um, yeah. Is that the same person that's coming? Who's uh, who's coming on? Yeah, that's Steve. Steve Robinson. That is the gentleman that is regarding the redevelopment for seven hundred four Woodward. Okay. And what what is right? What's what in general is that going to be? Do we know? He has not <laughs> submitted. 
he has not submitted that to me yet. Um, whenever I get it, I will give you guys a copy with uh, along with the. It will be included with the packet as well for those of you Right, but, but I think part of our conversation was unless someone had something sub <laughs> substantive. Uh, we it's not like an open let's just sit around and talk about it did he say i wasn't at the meeting but i listened to the replay is he the contract purchaser did he say yes. they have another contract mm -hmm. so he's taken I he's taken that though, step that we would okay. we went back and forth because we didn't want to be giving guidance and being right. designing it, something right, for somebody. And designing it but we also understood like the cost that goes into it and right, we would right, 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 give right, some right. consideration right Okay. But well, I guess yeah. my question would we don't know what it is at all. <coughs> I, I think that's why he's coming to I, tell us. I that is why it's coming. Prior to the meeting, okay. a week out, he had the deadline for whatever he's planning to present to you all, and that's when I'll distribute that okay. to you all as of right now. I do not know what he is proposing. Okay. I, I guess I thought from the last <coughs> meeting, and maybe I'm mistaken, was that they were going to administration right. first. Did they? Oh, okay. Um, he, he, had, he had a conversation with Blaine. I don't know if oh. Blaine, he shared something more okay. with Okay, that's just, okay. Uh, just as though they did cross, uh, cross he, that he, step. Yep, he did that. Uh, we did a Zoom meeting, and he said he will present a concept. And so I don't know what that concept is. <laughs> okay. So, so then he really didn't meet with you. Well, we talked for over 45 minutes. <laughs> but about, about nothing? About, nothing. <laughs> the weather. A, about all of the different possibilities. So I can show you a blank page and say anything could happen. I don't know what. I know Mr. Either. Robinson very well. I you know well. Mr. Robinson very well from our prior lives. He's a very straight shooter. He's a civil engineer. Okay. I think he'll, he won't waste your time. He'll bring a plan. He'll bring something along. He's yeah. very, very good. Right. And I, I, I think um, what's interesting is, if I remember right, I think the last time somebody came in looking just for some dialogue was on this property right. mm -hmm. regarding tiny houses. It was. Oh, well, that <laughs> so it was. It was. Well, that was yeah. the first one. And, and then, then, yeah, then we had a story. Right. I think that was Tiana's point. We've, Prior to the story. We've given house. feedback on this property, but not to this gentleman. Right. But I think that I know there's been dialogue amongst this group as to whether or not we want people coming in. I don't think we opinion. want our time wasted. And I, I would agree with that. Yeah. I, 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 I do. I agree with that, too. But um, but I don't think Steve Robinson is going to waste your time. No, and I don't think that it's it's fair necessarily to have somebody put all the money and effort into a no. full site plan package. Uh, and I agree with everything you say, but I guess w meeting with the administration well, Shannon, was demand, kind of a, a demand silk. something from him before he's put on the agenda. Yeah, well, Just that, demand that, something. Yeah, that's where yeah. We, we pretty yeah. much um, left it. He, he's okay. going to put something. Okay. Okay. He just that's didn't good. give it then. And that's so, good. Yeah. And if you guys know him. bring and, it, and, and or it, we'll put you off. So. Yeah, if it's a blank page, I'll say he hasn't we'll met put, that requirement. We'll put but you if he yeah. brings something, then it's that's... It's a mysterious yeah. mystery <laughs> thing. I'm actually... Very exciting. Very well, it's exciting. very yeah. ugly, and yeah. I'd love to see somebody do something with it. But it's what are you going to spot do? billboard up in the UP? Yes. Well, the Pink Creek Trail is very excited too. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, so maybe so. we could just tear the whole damn thing down and leave it. Well, <laughs> given the uh, the lease agreement that that property has with the trail, I understand there's some old railroad so stuff. Somebody there, mentioned be, that before. It'll be very interesting to see what. Apparently, there used to be a railroad siding that went into that property. Huh. And I think amazing. the current owner of the property, and and it's still there in the deed. So happy to get rid so of it. So the lease agreement with, with the trail. Oh, the trail specifies oh, specific the, the current use. owner. Oh, I bet they love to hear of that. the property. Yeah. Yes. So Say it one more time, Councilor. So, <laughs> Solder Onyx is on uh, Pancreas Trailways property. Right. There is an agreement, um, but it, it specifies specific use to how that piece of the, the parcel is to be used. Okay. So that would have to be amended or uh, rezoned or uh, don't, don't know yet. Wow, so that's gonna be they ugly. are very, who, they're very anxious. The trail is very, I'm on the trail. This lease is like who, who's signed this lease? The city's lease with it? I bet it was signed between oh, the oh, railroad and the trail 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 Okay. And they inherited it. Right. So it's a deed restriction as to what the use yes. could be. Okay. Blaine, are, are the city's water Pipes involved here also. <laughs> Can we oh, is he like? running? Yeah, he needs yeah. some exercise, right? I'm just going to stay here for a moment. Um, as I think this is the last item on your agenda. Get my steps in. Um, are the cities, I'm sorry, water pipes? I didn't. I know the well, you have a well field out we do. north. Yep. The, the, the lines that go back to the DPW that feed the city's west side water system, are, are they 
they're entangled not, in solar ionics? They're not. We have water connections into the solar ionics. But only as well to the building. As, yeah, and into our public. Doesn't works affect building, your but, mains. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll see them. I have, I have another question for you. you uh, any other? Do you want me to send you the agreement? I think we have a copy of the okay. agreement. <coughs> Maybe send it to all of us, I guess. We can have Sienna send it to you. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to see it eventually. This is a question of infrastructure. I, I noticed that uh, next week the Avon de Quinder 23 mile road thing starts. They're going to reconstruct the whole thing. And I also noticed, I'm going back to the infrastructure committee days, that Great Lakes Water Authority is going to move the, the main that we tap into over, they're going to move it so that it touches the city of Rochester. Can we become a primary purchaser from Great Lakes and avoid Shelby Township? We could. We are reviewing that. We're looking at that. Uh, we're, we're already we're working on it. Yeah. So, a lot of money. Um, yeah. We're also working with uh, Shelby at the same time. They've now built a very large tank, and the cost savings due to them getting the water now off peak into that will actually reduce our city costs, potentially lower than our cost if we directly connect because okay. of our elevation. So okay. we're, we're reviewing that. But I'm yeah. glad you're on it. Thank We've you. Been I think ever since I've been on city council, we've been trying to figure a way around. Figure, yes. figure a way around. For those Detroit, of you who don't know, Shelby, Warren. <laughs> the east side of the city is served by Great Lakes Water Authority, and there's not a main. There was not a main near this city, mm -hmm. so we could not become a primary customer. So we actually buy our east side water from Shelby Township, but I think it's a twenty percent upcharge. Correct. And there's a, oh, isn't it? Yes. Warren does 20% as well. So <laughs> oh, right. there. So, so there, it's worth there. revisiting. It's worth yeah. revisiting. We're at the end of the line. But, yeah, on basically. the west side, don't we use the We're well? We're on well. Yeah. West side, right. yeah, we use yeah. the well. I think it's that liver. So the towers, the old towers you see, that's the west side well. Can yeah. we do anything to improve it so it doesn't destroy uh, your fixtures? Yeah. We can't. Oh, gosh. I will note the state allows up to 50%. So when it was signed, uh, it's a bargain. Uh, back in Ooh, 19, wow. 19. But of course, the west of the like well water is a lot. 20% okay. was yeah, fair. Fair. And fair. another Glad you're on top. do have at 50. So you know that this city is a licensed water distributor. And Blaine actually has staff who does put chemicals in the water, mm -hmm. a la Flint. Just so you know. I, I'm for moving past that, but it's a big cost thing because mistakes get made, and that's what happened. Yeah, don't say that. Dennis. It's what, it's what happened. <laughs> so you know that, this is a fluid uh, thing that always needs to be revisited. Did you know that? that, they <laughs> did know that. that no. This might be a good time to say our water's tested daily. We yeah, yeah, it's yeah, very good. Yeah, there, there you go. go. There you go. It's very good. Several staff it's members. Very complex issue well for a little town. To ensure that our water. Well, it is, and it's it brings up. Issues of fairness and cost, and yeah. so I mean, it's a very complicated, touchy subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with our neighbors. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. We're just good. having two different waters. I mean, water is water, but there's different compositions, yeah. and we literally have two separate systems. Mm -hmm. And we have explored looking to see if our aquifers could do for the whole rest, and unfortunately, we don't have enough capacity from our systems to be able to cover. The state of Michigan doesn't allow that uh, cross, right. uh, so you can't blend. So, I mean, we've, we've reviewed that, and again, that's where, as the mayor was saying, we have an infrastructure committee that has probably turned over as many rocks as they can find, and a few, I think, that they just seem to, well, see if we can do this, too. Yeah. So, we do continue to explore whatever we can. Uh, Very good. You have great consultants. I, I know you're in good hands. I just saw that in the paper, and it occurred to me that, yep. is this our chance? Yeah, it may or may not be. Potentially, but we're looking at it, and we've been on it and already in conversations with Great Lake Water Authority several years ago. Okay, and very good. Any other business? Can I ask one other update question? Just pure curiosity is, what's the latest on the Mosheri property that I drive by every day? <laughs> Nick, I don't know if you've question. heard anything. Is nothing. Nothing. Um, I would, I would love if we would do a write-in campaign to Mr. Mosheri to answer that question. Which one? He's never mentioned it in any of his presentations anywhere. Just bought a giant property downtown Detroit. So I don't, it's not on the horizon. So is the site plan expired? Uh, I, I, That's another I'm whole story. Sure he thinks close. it has not. We think that it has. Ask yeah. Mr. Cry to opine on that. <laughs> so should the uh, overlook be expired? 
Yes, that's that is. Right. They already withdrew. That's done. So only Mosheri thinks he has a in perpetuity site plan, which we've never done in our lives. Mm. He knows better. This the plan will come another day. I don't think he no, does know better, actually. He doesn't think so. What about, what about Riverwalk while we're talking? That's all right now. Yeah, this is the one Nick? Right, right across from the... Um, Nick, do you have uh, uh, Riverwalk? The apartments? Oh. Yeah. The Rewald's office. Oh, yeah. So, Mr. Yes. Mag, just talked to Mr. Randy. So, today we've got the Clomar and the Lomar approved by Eagle. He's going to try to get a million-dollar grant to help clean up the property without being a brownfield. He's still chomping to go, so uh, we're moving forward with engineering and all that good stuff. So he's uh, he's actively pursuing trying to get that happen. Good. Okay. okay. Good to know. That's good to know. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I'm sure you're disappointed to hear that yeah. this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> yeah. so, sorry I dragged it out, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner?